Here we go. What's up everybody and welcome back to another Geek Essentials video. So it's been a while, quite some time, and I do mean quite some time since I've done a video on this current topic. Part of this channel was built on talking about anything you could get into, we called it geeking out on it. I've been a WWE fan for as long as I can remember. I've gotten tweets, DMs, YouTube messages, comments over the past year. Shane, where is the WWE content that you produced on a regular basis? And if you've been a part of this channel for quite some time, you know, whether it's me or someone else making a video for this channel, that wrestling has been a big part of it. Or, well, I wouldn't say a big part, but a part nonetheless. And I was going to review the Royal Rumble, beings that I don't watch nearly as much wrestling as I used to. But I do try to keep up with the big four events, which you have the Royal Rumble, which just happened last night or maybe two days ago by the time you see this. Then you have WrestleMania. You don't even need to be a wrestling fan to know what that is. SummerSlam, another event with a big presence. You may know what that is as well. And Survivor Series, their event in the fall. I try to keep up with those four main events. Beings that they have their two weekly cable shows plus like three or four shows a week on the WWE Network that is so huge by now, I, I just, it's hard to keep up with. So I don't watch nearly as much as I used to. But nonetheless, for those big four events, the Royal Rumble is supposed to pave the way for the entire year. They call it the road to WrestleMania. They call it that for a very good reason. By the end of the Royal Rumble event, if you're a longtime watcher, you should know what the year is shaping up to look like. So instead of reviewing the Royal Rumble, I just want to maybe talk a little bit about it and give you my thoughts on the current state of WWE and tell you why I don't watch nearly as much as I used to. Part of the reason is for missed opportunities. Part of the reason the WWE suffers in ratings. I don't mean suffers as in they're falling off, approaching being canceled. I don't mean anything like that. I mean that if you turn the clock back 10 years, their ratings are nothing compared to what they used to be. Their storylines are nothing compared to what they used to be. And yes, I say storylines, this may trigger some people, but we all know that the outcome of these matches are predetermined. Every now and then, I drift on back to WWE to give it another chance, just to check in, other than watching these big four events, just to see what they're up to. Over the past, I'd say, month, I've, I've been doing that. You know, we're getting ready for the Royal Rumble. Let's see if they've got their shit on track. Let's see if it's, you know, got that big bang like it used to, where, hey, look at me, I'm over here. Pay attention, change the channel. This is what you want to be watching. They used to have that kind of presence and do still sometimes. So a big thing going on in the company, as you guys may know, is Seth Rollins is at Triple H's throat. Guys used to be buddies. They're not anymore. Long story short, this could work on numerous levels. Lots of old school wrestling fans love Triple H. Lots of people that have been watching the past four or five years love Seth Rollins. The diehard fans even love Seth Rollins, the ones that have followed him his entire career. This could work on multiple levels. Over the weekend, they kind of touched on it because they have events leading all the way up to the Royal Rumble. Come Sunday, what we've all been waiting for, they leave it alone. It's like it never happened. I mean, yeah, they show highlights of, of what had happened days prior or the day prior. But you don't see these two, the entire three and a half hour event. Missed opportunity, in my opinion. If they would have played more on that Seth Rollins Triple H feud, I believe the Royal Rumble would have been ten times better. And that's just one missed opportunity. Another missed opportunity is The Undertaker was in the Royal Rumble. So with The Undertaker being in the Royal Rumble and it being his last year in the company, you would think that they would give him a pretty big presence or a push in that Royal Rumble match. Have him either come down to winning it or just something that says something to go out with a bang. Missed opportunity in my opinion. They have him come in late in the match, which is what you want in the Royal Rumble, only to be eliminated by Roman Reigns, which Roman Reigns... Many of you may know him again. You don't really have to be a wrestling fan to know who Roman Reigns is. He is another John Cena. He's everywhere. But Roman Reigns eliminating The Undertaker so quickly makes a statement to me. Yeah, it shows me that they're they're doing the right thing. They're putting the new guys over. 
well, not new guys, the newer guys, the guys that have a lot more road in front of them, they're giving them more of an opportunity. I get that. But Roman Reigns eliminating The Undertaker so quickly, the statement that that makes to me for a future match is that what very well could be The Undertaker's last WrestleMania, he will face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And where do you go with that? Does Taker go out as a winner? Does Roman Reigns beat him at WrestleMania? I mean, Roman Reigns gets enough heat. Imagine if he takes out The Undertaker at WrestleMania. No one is really going to like that. You are going to have people that don't even believe that for a second. But it is what it is. So miss opportunities. I believe the WWE drops the ball more now than they ever have. They've always had a good grasp on their audience. But here lately, and by lately, I I mean probably in the last six or so months, if not longer, it seems that they've lost touch with their audience. And I know it's been said a million times, and it'll probably be said a million more, but it's just not what it used to be. And in order for it to get back on top where I know it can be, it's going to take so much. And I just hope the WWE is willing to grind and get back to where, at least in my opinion, they used to be, like I said, they made that big bang where you wanted to turn the channel. You wanted to watch WWE. Nowadays, it's just really, it's not that way, at least in my opinion. So if you're one of the people that wanted wrestling content, here you go. If not, sorry for the change, you know, if you're a newer viewer. But part of me will always be a wrestling fan, and I guess you could say old habits die hard. Overall, the Royal Rumble event, I'd say it wasn't too bad. Uh, it could have been quite a bit better. For those of you that don't know, Randy Orton came out as the winner of the Royal Rumble. John Cena is now a 16-time world champion with Ric Flair. Kevin Owens retained his universal title, and Charlotte Flair retained her women's championship. If I had to give it a, a between a 1 and a 10, I'd say it was like a 7. It was on average. It's what you expected from WWE. And I think as long as they continue to deliver what you expect, they won't ever really be in a tough spot, like a, a real tough spot, but they won't get any better either. You want them to deliver above and beyond. Just like in the gaming industry, you want these companies to give you a big surprise, something you weren't expecting. You don't want your audience, your viewers, your customers to get just what they expected. You want them to get a little more than that. And I think the WWE is more than capable of giving us that. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget Twitter, Instagram, Facebook links down in the description. And I'll catch you in the next one.